Hey guys and gals, Danny Boy here, and today this is going to be part one of my overall comparison here between the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 and the Apple iPhone 12. So, I want to kind of do half the categories in this part one. We'll talk about performance, displays, builds, and cameras here. And then in part two, I'll dive into the rest of it, the software, the unlocks, these speakers and the battery performance. We'll talk about that in part two. So let's go ahead and dive right into this. We got a lot to talk about here. And let me say first off that I've done independent videos on all these categories that have more detail. So this is just kind of the overall review here. If you want even more detail, if you want the tests, the photo comparisons, all that stuff are going to be in the more detailed videos. This is more of kind of a discussion, an overall, quicker, briefer, general comparison. Okay, so with that said, let's talk about performance here first and foremost, but actually before we talk about performance, I do want to mention the prices on these phones. So Galaxy Note 20 here, Full retail price, 999 bucks. iPhone 12, 829 for the unlocked model. Of course, you can get the iPhone 12 through your carrier or, you know, a carrier branded phone, 799 right? So that's kind of where we're at with the prices here. I have seen the Note 20 on sale. I've seen it as low as like 800 bucks ish So pretty similarly priced here. Okay, performance. So let's talk about the performance. Snapdragon 865 Plus and the Galaxy Note 20 and the Apple iPhone 12, Apple A14 chip. Now the A14 chip in the iPhone 12 here is basically the top of the line processor on any smartphone. Okay, even over the Snapdragon 888, which is the 2021 flagship Snapdragon processor. It, it's just a screaming chip here, guys. It's probably a generation or two ahead of what Snapdragon is doing. Okay, so, or Qualcomm. So, that's where we're at there. You just got to keep that in mind, but... You know, let's forget about that technical aspect here for a second and just talk about my usage. Basically here, guys, both of these phones are super, super fast. Um, if I can get into the phone here, hold on. So, this Note 20 is, I would say, the fastest um, Android phone that I've ever had. Now, I've not had uh, 888 yet. Uh, so, for me, this is the fastest I've had. It's super, super fast. Really like this performance here on with the Snapdragon 865 Plus. The Apple, of course, feels super fast. There's no question about it. Um, get the brightness down here. Just navigating the phone, everything feels fast and fluid, you know, definitely uh, just great here guys i mean both of these phones for performance have been perfectly fine both would be good at for editing videos editing photos both of these phones are going to be great for kind of the more intensive tasks okay so you really can't go wrong either way i wouldn't say i feel like one it's necessarily faster than the other. That would be really close. So while I got the phones on, let's go ahead and talk about displays here. So 6.7 inch Super AMOLED panel here on the Note 20. Clocks in at 393 PPI, so a little bit lower there on the PPI, right? Would have preferred a little bit higher, maybe in the mid 400s. Definitely would have been nice to have a quad HD display somewhere in the 500s. Okay, 393. Honestly, though, guys, it's a great panel. Uh, that 
393. You can really only tell it with text, and you kind of got to look really closely. Samsung just does an excellent job with their panels. They calibrate them well. I think even the iPhone 12 might have a Samsung panel. I don't know, but bottom line is they're good panels, right? Samsung knows what they're doing with displays. Okay, viewing angles, tremendously good here. All that being said, major, major criticism here of the Note 20 was for 2020, it's only got a 60 hertz panel here. So a lot of people kind of were not happy about that given the $1,000 price tag. I think my personal take on that is if you can look past that and pretty much every other aspect, this is a great, great phone. Even for the money, I mean, you're kind of maybe a little bit overpaying at $1,000, but it's a really good phone here, guys, otherwise. So if you can get past that, if you can just accept, yes, it has a 60 hertz. Sorry, guys, the phone storage on my 7T there got full, so the video stopped. I didn't realize it for maybe 30 seconds, but... I'm back in here now. So as I was saying, this is a really, really rock solid display, even though it's 60 hertz, you know. Due to the Snapdragon 865 Plus, it almost feels as if it was like, say, a 75 hertz display, if such a thing was. That's, you know, it feels better than 60 hertz because of the high performance processor. So, Really like the display here. Um, let's look at the brightness. I don't know if that made it uh, into... There is a warning that normally pops up there, but since I just clicked it. Uh, really bright here. It's too bright for the phone to record it here, but it uh, gets really bright. So if you can get past the fact this is a 60 hertz display and just look at the rest of the phone, look at the display as is... This is a rock-solid phone, guys. Just no doubt about it, a rock-solid display. Okay, so let's talk about the iPhone 12 here. 6.1 inch, so this is kind of our middle iPhone. It's not the mini, it's not the Pro Max. It's our middle size here. 6.1 inch display, OLED technology, of course. 460 on the PPI here, guys. So really higher resolution than the Note 20, okay? Like that it's 460. In my opinion, 450 is kind of the marker where a, a smartphone display gets really sharp. So 460 is really good here. Text looks nice and sharp. It's not obviously quite as good as if it was in the 500s, like with your Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. I think the, uh, what is it, the uh, uh, S21 has a high res. Uh, S21 Ultra, I think, has a one in the 500s. But it's good here, guys. Um it's calibrated really well. Apple does a, a spectacular job at that. Viewing angles, some of the best here in the game here with the iPhone 12, no doubt about that. Um, it is 60 hertz, so Apple still has not dived into the 90 or the 120 or hopefully higher because remember, we got to remember... Apple was the first with a high-res display. I think it was the iPhone 4 had a 326 PPI phone. When Apple does dive in to the high refresh rate, in my opinion, they should push the envelope. They should go um, whatever so that they're better than everyone else. You know, Apple should lead the way, I think, and not follow uh, all the time like they've been doing in recent years. But that's getting way off topic. <laughs> okay, so here, here, guys, just a great display. Good for one-handed usage, okay? 6.1-inch display. Good here, guys. Uh, pretty much can reach almost... or. 
just about the whole display almost with one hand, especially with my right hand. So definitely like the size. Okay, so again, because this has a screaming processor, it also feels a little bit faster than 60 hertz in my opinion. Let's talk about the builds on these phones. Okay, so this was the other criticism here of the Galaxy Note 20 besides the 60 hertz display. Looking at the phone, I like the squared off design. I like that it's edge to edge on the display. You do have, and, and I probably, when I was talking about the displays, I should have discuss this let me go to developer options here and because we want to make sure that everyone understands this uh let's see where we're at here simulate let's see let's go to simulate display cutout okay so let me see uh, got to get an app open where you can see it. So you can see the whole punch cut out there, right? Okay, so I had the cut out uh, kind of, I had the developer options where it was blacking out the area because I don't prefer the center hole punch cut out, okay? But th the point is that it's got an edge-to-edge -edge display here, guys. We have metal sides, chrome looking sides. The back kind of comes up nice into the side there. It kind of gives it an extra design element. A little bit of a brushed aluminum look on the top and bottom here. Okay, so good design here. And then we get to the back, which was the other point of criticism with this phone because this is a plastic back. I think the housing of the lenses here is glass, but plastic back. Still do get wireless charging, so that's good, but a lot of people didn't like this. Personally, doesn't bother me because I think it makes the phone a little bit lighter, and I always have a case on the phone. So the fact that it's got a plastic back, as long as it looks good, which it does, doesn't really bother me, but again, for a thousand dollars, a lot of people didn't like that. So that's where we're at here. Overall, I'd say good build quality if you can get past that plastic back. Still pretty good here, guys. iPhone 12, we know Apple just does a tremendously good job with the builds on her phone. Uh, no matter which iPhone, I think, if I can get this case off here. Okay, they went back to the kind of the iPhone 4, iPhone 5 days with this design here on the 12. Got an edge-to-edge -edge display here with the bigger notch. Ugh, they need to do something about the notch, like trim it down or get rid of it or something. Still kind of looks a little dated being that big, but... Nice flat sides here. They do have a split volume rocker. The Note 20 has a single button there that rocks. Uh, do like this design. Metal guys on the sides. Uh, just really premium looking. Nice glass back here. This housing with the cameras I think is also glass. It's not plastic I don't think. Do you like the attention to detail with the metal around the lenses? Uh, just really rock solid design here on the iPhone 12. And I was pretty surprised when I got this phone because I had never seen it in person before when I went to go pick it up. And I was really surprised at the how good of a design this is, even for the more... It's not a pro model, but yet it still has a pretty much a pro design almost here. I mean, really rock solid design. As a matter of fact, I think I like this better than the pro design because the pros have the kind of shimmery, uh, glossy sides, which I don't like. I like the more metal look on the side, so I, I kind of like this better. 
The two camera setup looks fine, looks nice and simple. The triple camera setup almost sometimes looks like there's a lot going on. So it's nice here, guys. I like this design, you know, rock solid. Both of these phones are IP68 dust and water resistant. And the iPhone 12 as well has wireless charging here. So they both have wireless charging. Really like the designs of each of these guys. Um, I think when I was talking about the iPhone 12's display, I don't think I mentioned the brightness. Look how bright that gets. Really bright here, guys. Don't want to forget about that because a lot of people care about that. So, really bright here on the display. But for the final point here, guys, let's talk about the cameras. Let's kind of do this quick because this video has gone longer than I intended. Uh, basically, Note 20 triple camera setup, iPhone 12 dual camera setup, as I just was talking about, 12 megapixel, 64 megapixel telephoto that gives you 3x optical zoom, and 12 megapixel ultra wide. Now, I don't know if that's the exact stack, like I just basically was pointing, but basically here, guys, really good setup. You know, we've got the 64 megapixel, which can be used for standard shots, not just the 3x optical zoom. So that's nice. I do wish the ultra wide was a little bit higher on the megapixel, but it is what it is. iPhone 12, we've got two 12 megapixel cameras here, one standard, one ultra wide. Okay, so good here it's got the necessities right does a good job um video wise 8k 24 frames per second is your maximum video here on the note 20 and 4k 60 frames per second on the iphone 12. flipping the cam phones over we've got each has a selfie cam here okay at the top okay We've got a 10 megapixel on the Samsung and that, and then we've got a 12 megapixel on the iPhone. Okay, so that's where we're at here. Uh, it's a little bit higher res on the iPhone for the selfie shot. So my overall experience with these phones is the Samsung shots are a little bit warmer, okay? They're... Uh, the 64 megapixel mode here is kind of the big differential in my opinion. I love using that mode to shoot standard shots. You don't have that capability here on the iPhone 12. The iPhone 12 shots are a little more natural looking, okay, color wise. Uh, the Note 20 obviously I think gets better detail in photos and video. However, I would say the iPhone 12 has better stabilization in video. And I think the iPhone 12 takes slightly better wide-angle camera shots. So, they both have their strengths and weaknesses here, in my opinion. Uh, selfie cams are about, you know, they're both good. I would say the iPhone shows a little more detail, hence the higher megapixel they're both good in that regard. Uh, I think the Note 20 might do a little bit better with the portrait shots. They're both good here, guys. Um, Camera-wise, like I said in the, uh, the more uh, independent video I did, comparing the cameras on both of these phones, you can see samples there of both photo and video. Uh, so that's where we're at here. Overall, guys, both of these phones are good phones. They compare really well against one another, I think. And I think um, for the price, you know, you're getting good phones here. Performance, I think, is definitely going to go to the iPhone. Displays, kind of debatable due to the size difference. Uh, I think overall, you... I mean, I don't know... 
it depends on how you look at it. I like the bigger display, but I do like the high resolution on the iPhone, so that's kind of a toss-up. Builds is going to go to the iPhone by a little bit, for sure, and cameras, I think it's going to go to the Galaxy. So those are kind of my thoughts here. They, you know, As you can see, it's kind of back and forth here. So guys, these are my thoughts on my part one of my overall comparison between the Galaxy Note 20 and the iPhone 12. As always, if you're enjoying my videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Hitting that thumbs up button helps out as well. And stay tuned for part two here of this comparison. For now, guys, peace out.